Hello and welcome to another video. This critically thinking video will serve as an introduction to plans or policy affirmatives in the world of circuit debate. As a lesson preview, this lesson will cover first the plan text, second the burdens, and third we'll talk about the advantages. So first let's talk about the plan text and circuit debate. What is a plan text? A plan text denotes a policy action that denotes the action of the affirmative advocacy. So for example, in a resolution or a topic where it says resolved justice requires open borders for human migration, a policy action that denotes the action of the affirmative advocacy in a policy debate style would be plan justice requires open borders for human migration within the African Union. The reason why I specify the African Union, just know that a plan is a, essentially a policy action that is going to be fiated or essentially carried out in the affirmative speech. The reason why people run plans is because it requires more in-depth prep to answer by the negative. It requires more in-depth research and it has or necessitates a deeper understanding. Also, it requires or allows the affirmative to break new apps. Breaking new apps is essentially when no one on the entire circuit or no one in your particular tournament has read an app, and if you're the first one to make your app or the first one to read it in the debate round, that means that no one's going to know that your app exists before you run it in a tournament. Means that breaking a new app is essentially another word for saying that you or your teammates or even your friends are reading a completely new app that no one on the circuit knows about. So now let's talk about the burdens of reading a plan F or the types of things that you need to keep in mind in ensuring that your plan F that you're writing or you're reading checks all the marks. So first, your plan F can't be non-topical. In other words, if you want to read an actual policy action, the plan has to be in the scope of the resolution. For example, it can't be plan justice requires aid for human migration within the African Union. If the resolution is resolved justice requires open borders, that means that your plan has to fall within open borders and it can't require anything else, and in this case, it can't require aid for human migration. Second, your plan can't be extra topical, also denoted as extra T. The plan cannot do additional action outside of the scope of the resolution. For example, your plan cannot be Plan just to requires open borders and $1,000 for human migration within the African Union. Obviously, $1,000 does not fall in the resolution because the resolution says only that we should require open borders, not the $1,000. So essentially, your plan has to not only be topical, but it can't do things that the topic or the resolution doesn't specify. In other words, it can't be extra or even additional outside of the topic. And third, you have to be ready to defend or answer topicality shells. This will be covered in later videos when we talk about theory debate, but you have to be ready to have a theory debate or a theory shell run against you saying that the affirmative must be topical. Even if you read a specific plan F about how you should specify a certain state, for example, the idea of you specifying why there should be open borders within the African Union can be read, you have to be ready to defend why exactly you get to specify the African Union. This is a more in-depth or a more advanced type of debate that you have to be ready to defend, but just realize that even if you think your plan is topical, there are certain arguments saying that your plan, no matter how grammatically or semantically or pragmatically topical it seems to be, might not be to your opponent, so make sure that everything is up for debate. And a topicality shell is always run by the negative. So now let's talk about the advantages. Advantages are an endorsement of the affirmative plan. They oftentimes show you why exactly the affirmative plan text is good. In a debate case or an affirmative case, there are usually one to two advantages that you would read. Now let's talk about the structure of an advantage made up of three to four pieces of evidence. So the first part of an advantage is the uniqueness evidence. This piece of evidence specifies why the current situation is bad. The second piece of evidence that you would want to read is also known as a link that the current situation or state of affairs eventually could lead to. The internal link is the third piece of evidence and says how a situation cascades into a problem. And lastly, the impact specifies how bad that problem is 
in, for example, that impact could be extinction, where every single person on this entire planet would die. You could have a piece of evidence saying how exactly that specific problem would cascade into world extinction. But make sure that your arguments don't fall into other logical fallacies and make sure that they're not assuming certain things to be true or they're trying to make certain arguments that aren't true to be true. And also keep in mind that these pieces of evidence don't have to be independent, i.e. your uniqueness and link piece of evidence doesn't necessarily have to be two separate pieces of evidence. If you find both pieces of arguments in one specific article, you can obviously cut that one article in one card and specify that as both your uniqueness and your link. So in other words, you don't have to have three to four pieces of evidence. You can have more than that if you have a lot of impacts, or you can have less than that when you are very time pressed. And after your two advantages, you would have the solvency. This section, which is also known as the solvency page, would be made up of one to two pieces of evidence. And what exactly does the solvency page actually do? The solvency section is at the very top of your case or at the very bottom, i.e. it's before your advantages or after your advantages. And this solvency section specifies how your plan solves the problems and the advantages. For example, if you have a solvency advocate or an author that is trying to promote your solvency or your affirmative plan, it would actually specify how exactly the affirmative plan would solve for your harms that you've outlined in your advantage. For example, if I run a plan about how you should have open borders within the African Union, the solvency section would outline how exactly opening borders would be good for the economy of Africa, or even the tourism section for the entirety of the African continent. Essentially, the solvency page would specify how exactly the affirmative would solve and how exactly the enforcement mechanisms would be able to alleviate your problems. If you have any questions about circuit debate, I'll be happy to address your questions down below as soon as possible.